thank you very much for kind introduction and inviting me here. Um, as uh, my name is Aisha Akil, and um, I wanted to talk about um, some novel materials some unconventional materials. I am from materials background. Before uh, I go further, I would like to, um, I would like to actually um, thank, uh, thank you, my collaborators and uh, my uh, boss, uh, Christian Bach and MCQST for funding my um, STAR fellowship. Yes, it's working now. Um, I'm uh, scheduled uh, very good. The uh, last talk was very relevant and a very nice talk. So there is actually um, a room for new magnetic systems, systems which are different uh, from conventional uh, materials. So what I do, I uh, grow um, crystals with certain magnetic properties, Mainly my focus is materials which are magnetically insulated, so you can have uh, more uh, efficient spin waves excited in this one because you will not have electron electron scattering and very low magnetic damping. There are um, if there are no um, electrons um, moving electrons, there are still localized spins, so you will have magnetic moments at certain. Um, magnetic fields below Curie temperature, you will align everyone together like normal ferromagnet. In previous talk, there was mentioned many times yttrium iron garnet. Uh, so yttrium iron garnet is one of the best magnetic insulators with very low magnetic damping. However, what uh, I am interested in that um, my spin structures, this is static spin structure. So static spin structure, uh, can actually go from really oriented, nice uh, magnetization to some twisted structure. So it can twist to uh, some continuous transformation like a helix, and it can go to more complex skirmions. And this happens in these magnets, which are known as chiral magnets. Um, and uh, here is a classical example. So what we expect so that we have some flexibility to tilt and we want to have, we want to understand how much our structure will tilt and we want to control it. So what is special about these materials? Luckily, I only have to tell that there is one symmetry which is broken and that is invariant symmetry. So this crystallographically, these crystals are just like the magnetic atoms are distributed just like our uh, fingers on our hands. So if you apply inversion, either is left hand or right hand, they are not uh, identical. So inversion symmetry is broken. Just like that, crystallographically, these systems have, has no inversion center. So it has actually consequence on the magnetic properties of this material. So there is a non-zero uh, interaction uh, unlike exchange, this is jaloshinsky moria interaction. It tries to align neighboring spins perpendicular to each other instead of parallel. So what it does, it will actually twist this uh, structure. So here are the skirmions. So what are skirmions? So you can have a, a string of spins. You start to twist them continuously. You can have some sort of spirals. But these uh, skirmions, you can think of uh, uh, them as knots. So you really make knots. It's uh, not easy to go with con continuous transformation from helices to skirmions or vice versa. And actually the material that I'm talking there, uh, if you extend these uh, textures in the third dimension, they make long strings and they are very periodic. So they make he periodic hexagonal lattices. So uh, if we look to the phase diagram, so such phase diagram you, uh, is not for yttrium iron garnet. So yttrium iron garnet, you have uh, paramagnetic phase, then you go to ferromagnetic phase. But here uh, at larger fields, you have very much similar like yttrium iron garnet, but as you reduce, you go into um, a spiral texture and this angle uh, with respect to field will increase as you go down in the field. 
And uh, there is a red phase, which are skirmions. Skirmions have a different topology than the helices, so they are uh, more interesting. The material which I want to work, we want to see these knots. And interestingly, the material copper oxysilinate, which is oxide made of copper, is carrying the spins. Here, uh, the skirmions exist in two separate pockets, and the origin of these pockets are really different. Here, it's very close to TC. Thermal fluctuations plays a dominant role. However, at low temperatures, um, the uh, thermal fluctuations are not relevant, actually. It's the uh, cubic in isotropy. This material is cubic. The contribution is very small, but still it plays a crucial role. And we are actually interested to see the skirmions at low temperatures, because if you want to use these materials for um, uh, magnet photon coupling or some other applications uh, towards uh, qubits, you, can, you want to have skirmions at very low temperatures. Now uh, comes the dynamics. So if we look how the skirmions actually um, get excited, if you um, uh, apply a dynamic field, how the skirmions will uh, actually um, get excited and the deformation uh, decay uh, moves uh, in the crystal as function of time. So it is actually theoretically calculated. So you can see here is the skirmion texture. Um, and here you can see um, this uh, color contra contrast is plotted as the change in the dynamic component of the magnetization along the Z direction. So what it shows you that here the skirmion core is uh, shrinking or expanding in this deformation. So here they look small, here they look big as function of time. However, the upper mode is clockwise rotations of the spin. So here you can see some macroscopic dipole moment moving in the uh, clockwise direction. There are many more modes related to the skirmion. The, uh, they are magnonic crystal, band structure is very complicated. But uh, the upper modes where the skirmions actually distorts like four nodes, octopolar modes and higher order modes, they are actually, you are not sensitive in simple uh, ferromagnetic resonance type experiments. If you um, um, show the spectra, which um, how these modes will evolve as function of frequency, excitation frequency, and applied field. The interesting one I will just point out, not the other phases, the spiral twist, the helices, not so interested at the moment. I will only talk about skirmion. So the three modes which you can detect, which carry the uh, macroscopic dipole moment, uh, can be actually measured in the ferromagnetic resonance type experiment and has such dispersion. So as function of uh, field, when you go lower field, the counterclockwise mode moves towards the lower uh, frequencies and the others have different characteristics. So um, looks uh, interesting. If that's the case, uh, then, um, these modes, which I have shown you here, the three fundamental modes, which you can, uh, which you can, which has been already experimentally observed in many um, uh, publications already, these are related to high temperature skirmion pocket, which have a different origin. However, the low temperature skirmion pocket is very complicated, and its dynamic is also very complicated, and we want to see as uh, if there is any anything new to these uh, modes here. If um, we look the phase diagram here, the LTS, uh, the low temperature skirmion pocket, uh, because I want to focus, I will um, shift this phase diagram. So field axis will go lower and the temperature axis will go to the uh, Y. So in this way, uh, I have just focused here in the pink area. So now the high temperature pocket is up. I'm uh, only going to focus on the low temperature skirmion pocket. 
So one interesting thing here is that this skirmion pocket is different. Here you go, you will find skirmion nice lattice. But if you go here at these fields, the low temperature skirmions coexist with a lot of spiral phases. Skirmions are, you have to populate these skirmions. They are just in small patches. You won't find uh, the uh, skirmions. You have to populate them. The, and for this, it was, uh, it is already uh, established how to do this in, um, Christian Flydor group. The way to do it, you um, apply um, um, you apply a shaking field. So you actually apply a static field, which shakes a little bit around a certain value within this pocket. And this small shaking already is enough to populate the skirmions. So in this way, if you go to um, go to the uh, skirmion pocket pink one here, the green just indicates that we are using shaking field, we still stay in this region. And then if you go out, you will go into the other phases. But to see skirmions, you must populate them. Um, to observe the dynamics, you can just do um, uh, VNA measurements. So what you have here is a coplanar waveguide. You can put a bulk crystal here. You can uh, send some RF current through it and then get um, the um, magnetization excited in gigahertz. And then you can observe uh, the power which is uh, transmitted backward. And a applied field um, you can have here. It's out of plane. So in this way, we can actually do uh, a very simple uh, experiment. So experiment is simple, but the spectra is too much. Uh, if we look at once, don't know where to look. But uh, this is uh, become simpler. So here, uh, the point here is that the material has extremely low magnetic damping, 10 to power minus 4 at um, uh, 5 Kelvin. So that's why when you are doing experiment at five Kelvin, you get a lot of standing spin waves here. So here is your Kittel mode in the uh, field polarized state. However, down there, a lot of spin wave modes and you have also some copies, a lot of copies here for other uh, magnetic phases of CSO because of low damping. But I can simplify the spectra for you. For us at the moment, the important point is whether we are populating skirmions or not. And this um, happens only in this region where we are cycling. So some modes disappearing, some modes appearing. So in this way, um, we already know where the eigen modes of skirmions should appear. So we can relate them to skirmions. So we see that the skirmions can be populated because some modes are getting more stronger with the field cycling. We can fit the data for simplicity. The cycling region is not shown. So what we see is we have a Kittel mode and then we have uh, modes associated with skirmion as uh, in start. I told you that for high temperature skirmion phase, we only expected three breathing clockwise and counterclockwise mode. But here we see four. So this is the calculated spectra for high temperature phase where the inisotropy is not relevant at all. So here you can see that um, the blue is a uh, counterclockwise mode. The clockwise mode is up here. And here where we expect breathing, we have a splitting and that's the hybridization of the breathing mode. But with what it, is it hybridizing? So from uh, our calculation, where we have considered the Ginzburg-Landau free energy functional, we have considered uh, the uh, energies which are relevant to um, uh, get this texture. So here, cubic anisotropy at low temperature plays a crucial ro role. So for a finite value of K, you can see that this mode get uh, split, get hybridized with a higher order um, uh, with a higher order uh, clockwise mode, 
the flower like texture which i showed earlier which is which we are not sensitive to measure in the fmr type experiment but because of hybridization these nodes uh, they are uh, they have some pre precessional character so if you look further you can see that for uh, k equal to 0 if this is uh, here also the color contrast just shows you the change in the dynamic uh, magnetization component in the z direction so as for the skirmion the magnetization point in the center opposite uh, than the periphery so you see some color contrast and then this texture is breathing so it stays the shape stays same some thing is shrinking or compressing as function of time in the real space calculated images and uh, counterclockwise also nothing changes but just some rotation however when you put an inisotropic contribution you see that uh, there are some flower like textures appearing and here also the texture has some uh, more nodes involved into it so meaning that now they are not pure breathing mode but they get hybridized if we look to uh, as function of time how this texture or how this uh, excitation is uh, propagating um, within the crystal so from theory we can understand that yes we have some hybridization and the low temperature skirmion modes are different from high temperature skirmion modes and you can also see a movie where uh, you can see some uh, i only show for one mode that for k equal to zero there is no hybridization however for finite k you have hybridized behavior so uh, so far okay we had very complicated spectra we need the model we fixed some mode uh, we looked we have skirmions and we can understand its excitation uh, I am reasonably happy with it. I went inside, I cycled, I got skirmions, I got mort, I fit it. So, um, but what happened? If we go to the other side, I cycled here, I did all analysis. And when you cross zero field, they disappeared and appearing somewhere else. So they have a lot of history involved. I, um, I am actually not so happy about it. You can also see in spectra that this mode, which is related to this blue mode here, counterclockwise for the skirmions, it disappears after you cross zero field or you go towards uh, the high field. You have to cycle again. So this thing I don't like anymore. So it's similar that I have a tilt I adjusted my chair and then I just flipped back without any uh, proper notice. I don't like this. I, I want to have a little more control over it. So for that, what we did is, uh, these are the, now it's a preliminary data. So what we did is we have a copper oxysilinate crystal, bulk crystal. We just put a few nanometer permalloy on top, which is a, a ferromagnetic metal what it will do at the interface it will introduce uh, interfacial jaloshinsky moria interaction uh, additional to the bulk jaloshinsky moria interaction which is in cso so it pins the skirmions here you can see once you cycle and you get this blue mode here which is shown uh, from theory here and you go to zero field you go up again they they are there they have some sort of memory so we can here say that uh, the we can uh, make a skirmion phase remember better where the skirmions are and they should stay there for uh, a certain um, time and if you look uh, the spectra is much more complicated i only want to give one message here so there are there is very faint uh, indication for counterclockwise mode but if you go to zero field it's again there and once you sit uh, again hit the skirmion pocket so for many different field cycles and rotations the skirmions remember where they are and where they should appear so in this way we have slight control over the uh, memory of the skirmions and in this way we can um, make them remember slightly better 
So uh, with this, I would like to <laughs> summarize. I may, might be I was too fast. Um, with this, I would like to uh, summarize here that we can actually observe these skirmion modes and um, we can improve the memory of these skirmions, which are just the magnetic knots in the otherwise magnetized material. And perhaps there is a lot of room for uh, engineering the interfaces with uh, such chiral materials and looking the um, magnonic um, band structure of these skirmions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aisha. Uh, the floor is open for discussion. Questions, please. Thanks for the talk. Um, could you explain a little bit what is this whole band of modes that you see in the lower picture? Um, so I think I can uh, go back here. Um, so if we look uh, here, we are in the field polarized state. So we have the dark one is the uh, ketal mode. And as you go a little bit lower in the uh, color contrast, the um, these are just standing spin wave modes uh, because uh, you have very low damping digs. But once you go further down in field, you hit another phase, which is um, a spiral phase where the structure is slightly twisted away from the field. And then because it's a different uh, spin or uh, magnetization orientation, you expect different uh, excitation modes. So for the spiral, you have uh, two Q modes, uh, but that I haven't discussed here. But if you go, once you go into the skirmion, you expect to have three modes, but here it's very difficult to resolve the spectra because we have a lot of combination of Q modes and their copies as well as skirmion modes. But once you populate, you can identify very well the counterclockwise mode. And if you want to excite breathing mode, uh, so for breathing mode, you need to have uh, the excitation field along the applied field. So meaning if you change the position of your sample on the wave guide, you can differentiate between a precessional mode and a breathing mode. So here the dominant is just uh, counterclockwise mode and here a little bit faint line is from breathing mode. But in the theory, you can see more clearly. So you have two uh, breathing mode have now here hybridized, but the this um, orange one is the actually breathing mode and the blue one is, but then uh, again, it is a little bit more complicated than that. So here is another transition, which means that this skirmion uh, is going from triangular lattice to an elongated skirmion lattice. And there, as this let, uh, the spin structure is changing, your uh, eigen frequencies will also change for those more. So this, I haven't actually, uh, discussed here, but this is covered in this paper that there you can even detect uh, the um, elongated skirmion mode. Um, but uh, because, uh, and you can clearly differentiate it because uh, helices have no breathing corrector. Only skirmions have breathing counterclockwise or clockwise. Helices just- Would you, would you also discriminate by, I mean, you, you calculate the spectrum there. I presume you do it by looking pixel by pixel what the dynamics is and then kind of averaging everything or could you kind of spatially select uh, a region around the skirmion and calculate the excitation spectrum of that region? Um, we, uh, I guess we, uh, we can specially select, but this is not really specially select. We are looking at an average. Yeah, because now you see everything, right? You see you, the stuff next to the skirmion, the stuff in the skirmion. Uh, so, you know, this is not clear. In the theory, no, no. In the theory, well, you must first... Uh, get your uh, relevant phase and then see its uh, um, excitation as function of field. So for example, we uh, for breathing mode, you need to have skirmions first. Uh, lattice, um, you have to stabilize there by considering the energy functional which you need. And then you see how it uh, goes into the field polarized state or other way around. So um, indeed, when you are looking to, uh, in theory, you do not have this real uh, system type situation where all things are equally available. You must uh, select first one. 
stabilize your structure, see the dynamics, and then you have to take another. Yes. Any questions? I have another one. Uh, mm -hmm. So you you advertised you see it's always the kind of competitor to yield at least in the field polar, polarized phase. So what is changing or is there changing anything in the damping mechanisms if you go through this more complex magnetic texture phases uh, so is there anything known or, or do you know anything about the damping there is this damping still good or um, is this the line is that you see here an artifact um, of the from the phase formation yes so uh, the line width which we see here is uh, a lot of uh, so one thing i want even if you talk about kettle mode it's uh, um, just um, an artifact because we are looking a lot of copies, a lot of spin waves really next to the Kital mode. If you measure one uh, single peak, you will measure 10 to power minus four. So it's very narrow for yttrium iron garnet at room temperatures, 10 to power minus five. Um, but uh, then uh, talking about these uh, skirmions, uh, here also we have uh, damping is low, but I think. Um, as there are a lot of copies, perhaps we cannot really, we, we would expect the same damping. But in Kital mode, it was slightly easier. Uh, you can really see that there are a lot of copies if you take a line scan. However, in skirmions, you get a little bit slightly higher damping. And I think it has to do with um, uh, perhaps intrinsic and extrinsic effects also, and also just uh, the way we are measuring. Uh, 